back. It's lovely to see you back once more for another tutorial. My name's Sharon. If you haven't met me before, I'm from Sharon Dower Flower School and we run lots of online classes and workshops. So if you haven't participated in one of our Zoom sessions, pop and have a look at the website. I'll link it below and you might want to join us on one of our tutorials. Last week, I did a design using one of our British supermarket bunches of flowers and I'll link it in the cards here so if you haven't seen it you can pop back. What I'm going to do today is another design using the same bunch. It's a slightly different coloured bunch to the one I used before but it was a bouquet from Morrison's which is a supermarket here in the UK. It's a mixed bunch, it only cost £5 so it's not a very expensive bouquet, it's quite a simple selection of flowers. And this time I'm going to mix with it a bouquet of supermarket roses. So again, not too expensive, $5.99. Uh, just goes to show what you can do with, if you're creative with some supermarket flowers. So quite a large bunch of roses. They're small headed and it's almost got a red center to it or a red bi-colored part of the rose head. So I thought it worked really well with this round container here on my side. The last time I arranged with the bouquet I didn't use the foliage so I kept it to one side and I'm going to reuse it. So the only foliage I have this week is the two stems, one that came with the bench and one that was left from last week. So it's a design that's not going to use a great deal of foliage if you are unable to get hold of any. So what I've done is I've taken a look at what's in the bench. If flowers were in quantities of three, it would work quite well to evenly distribute them. But this has two quite large open, well, fairly open lilies, lilies that are starting to open anyway. It's two large lilies, but I only have two of them. And because I'm going to create a round design, really I have to work with them in opposite positions. I don't have three that will make a better circular design, but the two stems will have to make do because that's all I have. I have this rather lonely white snapdragon. He's probably going to give me the height in the center of my design. And then the other stems I have are spray flowers. They're all a bit tangled up at the moment, but we have Tanacetum, which is the yellow and white flower. So that's that one there. Very small, delicate and quite soft. And then we have this wonderful textured Carthamus, which I don't think I've used before in any of the previous tutorials, other than the one I did use in the same bunch. So what I've tried to do is picture in my head how I can equally spread them out in the arrangement. Now this time my floral foam is above the edge of my container so that means I'll be able to get placements in on the side but I am going to take the sharp edges off. Just use a knife, this is a good craft knife that's used a lot in floristry for conditioning and for working with your flowers and I tend to use a scissors while I'm doing the tutorials because I've aimed these tutorials at beginners but when you become more competent in floristry and flower arranging, you're likely to work with a knife and you'll cut your stems and your foliages with a knife because it's much quicker to work with. Okay, so we're doing a posy arrangement. That's a design that's going to be all round today and it's almost going to be the same size as my dish on top again. So if we think of this big red bowl and we think of the height it's going to create if we turned it upside down, those are the types of proportions that I'm working with. And proportions are going to vary depending on the style of arranging that you're going to do. Today we're working fairly traditionally British, traditional flowering, flowering, flower arranging. And um, I'm going to use double proportions for my arrangement. I've cut my lilies to the same size and to start with, I'm going to bring them in on either side of the arrangement. Now this does sometimes tend to give a bit of a visual line through the middle of the arrangement. If I just tilt that forward, what it does is almost splits the arrangement in half and that will become more evident as I make the arrangement. But because the lilies are quite a big flower, they're hopefully going to open in a more circular design. So if you only had two roses, they would stay and they would be quite prominent. But once this head opens up, 
I'm hoping that it's going to help make that design more circular. Now I only have one of these little snapdragons and when you're learning to do flower arranging sometimes to have one flower in a mixed bunch is quite awkward because it's hard to incorporate that one flower but for me today this is going to come here in the center and it's going to create my height flower and if I imagine that being a dome shape on top that's a similar shape to the arrangement that I'm going to create. Remember those lilies are going to open up really large and we don't want to squash them or damage them in the process. Right okay I'm going to now move to the roses because it's probably going to end up looking quite formal because we have lots of roses and that's going to create a pattern within the design but that's the flowers that I've got work to work with and I think sometimes this is the best way to arrange them. Now I could have come out so that I had horizontal placements and that would give me quite a structured design but what I've decided to do today is to angle them down slightly towards the bottom of my foam. This is what we call radial placements so we're arranging with our stems in this radial pattern and I'm going to keep working my way around almost filling in the gaps. If we think of a compass and as if by magic my lilies have opened up. I would like to say it was a trick of the camera and some special effects on my behalf but unfortunately yesterday our camera memory ran out so we've had to restart filming this morning and you can see overnight how much those lilies have opened up and how that's going to create a really vibrant focal point in my design. Now this is a good stage in this tutorial to let you know that if I was arranging with lilies that were open like this I would probably put them in at the end because they're quite a delicate flower the petals crease and they get bruised very easily so if I was working with open lilies I would have chosen to make the whole arrangement first and then pop the lilies in at the end but it's too late now because when I put them in yesterday they were in bed just like this and with a little bit of sunshine and some warmth they've opened up overnight. What I've also done, you can see on this lily here, I've removed the pollen and I'm going to do the same on this one here. Very gently use your finger and thumb to remove that pollen to stop it becoming dusty and then falling on your furniture or marking your curtains or damaging any of your upholstery you might have at home. Okay, so let's pick up on where we were yesterday. I was about to explain to you that I've almost positioned my roses in north, south, east and west. So I've gone in four corners. That does tend to make the design quite square because you have four points like a compass. So to try and prevent that from giving that squared off look, I'm going to go around again and place another rose in between each rose from the first placement. What I'm going to try and do is put them on a slightly different level. I might need to step back a bit to have a look at this one. What I want to do is not have that very severe line coming around the outside so I'm going to give some movement and hopefully there won't be that very visual circular line around the outside. It will give me more movement and it'll look more relaxed and far more natural. Okay, so at the moment I've used eight roses and probably at this stage what I would also do is to put it down on the floor because you get a better overall view of it and you can see how the shape is coming together. I'm not too concerned if it's not perfectly circular but ideally I don't want it to have too much of a squared off appearance. Now I'm going to bring this lovely orange colour up towards the centre because at the moment it's just around that outside edge. I've got five left so it's a case now of trying to fairly evenly spread out that five to give me a good colour balance up towards the top. And I am leaving some of the foliage on, not a great deal because the rose foliage does deteriorate quite quickly 
Now that that lily is open, there's a possibility that I won't get all five in, but we'll see how it goes. Remembering to give every flower some space so that it opens and you can really appreciate the different shapes and the different textures. Now what I think I will do is I will add another one up towards the height. So to accompany that white snapdragon there in the top. And there we are, a fairly even distribution of the colours. Now when you're working right on top of the design like I am now, it's hard to see how the overall shape is coming together. So it might need a little bit of tweaking and I'll have a look at that at the end before I photograph it. But again, quite a simple selection of flowers from the supermarket, but we've got quite a nice vibrant arrangement that would sit beautifully in the centre of the table. And if you could imagine this, if you're in America, it could be for Thanksgiving, it could be for an autumn supper here in the UK. You could have some fruits or vegetables, some wheat and barley placed at the bottom to really accentuate that theme and that idea. Even maybe some pieces of straw or hay to create a mood and an atmosphere. So our next set of flowers is going to be the Tanacetum. And I've got two colours, I've got yellow and white. Very, very soft, quite delicate flower to use. So be careful if you're arranging using flowers like this because the stems are quite soft. Initially, I'm going to start with the white because this is going to give me a good colour link with that little white flower, that snapdragon there on the top. It's difficult sometimes when you have one flower of one colour because it almost stands out. It's a bit like a sore thumb. It doesn't connect to anything else in the arrangement. So by adding this soft little flower, this beautiful round-headed tanacetum, then I'm going to get a connection to the white colour at the top. This is a flower that I use a great deal of during the summer and the autumn months when we're doing that rustic or that boho sort of themed wedding because it always looks beautiful it's nice and soft, the flower isn't too dominant and too heavy and it really suits that natural style of arranging. Okay, so what I've done is I've broken it down into several pieces so we get lots of that colour evenly distributed rather than putting the whole stem in as one, as one piece in one section. And you can do that in a bigger design, it just doesn't suit this smaller arrangement. So you'll see now I'm going to move on to the yellow piece and I'm going to break that down into lots of small pieces so we really get value for money from this. Really good economical use of our flowers. And I've probably now got about five stems. Isn't that lovely? And these, they last well but they would look really pretty in small little bottles arranged on the table. You could arrange them into a basket. They are a really versatile flower to use. Just remember that the stem is quite soft. And I've cut them all to a fairly similar length. And then I can work them round. I'm lucky enough to have two stems. So I'll do exactly the same with these. Cut them down short. They do get a little bit tangled. So don't worry if a few of the stems or a few of the flowers break off, just try and work with them without getting them tangled up. Now at this point I'm going to slide that lily out of the way because I don't want to damage it, I don't want to crease it and I've got yellow already around the outside so I'm going to try and bring some of this yellow up towards the top. And if you haven't got a container like I've got here, this sort of bulb shaped container, just something like a flat plate or a saucer maybe, or anything that will hold a block of foam and stop the water from dripping out. Okay, I think this is the last piece. Now again, what I would normally do at this stage is sort of step back a little bit, have a look at it from further away, put it on the floor so you can see an overall photograph, um, an overall view, but I'll just tip it forward so you can see and hopefully you can appreciate 
how that is coming together. I think possibly this side is a bit wide, but I'm not going to worry about it for now. I'm just going to continue. Now this is that lovely carthamus that we looked at in a previous video, or possibly you haven't seen it yet, who knows. But this is carthamus, it's a fabulous, almost like a thistle-like flower, but has that really autumnal orange colouring on the top. And again, rather than putting it in a, as, as the whole stem, because the scale of that in this small arrangement would be too much, I'm going to cut them down into individual stems so I get a lot more out of that one single stem. Again, be quite gentle around where the lily is because we don't want to damage it. And I'm only getting maybe four or possibly five stems out of there. And that's a fairly nice design with just two simple supermarket bunches. You could add some filler flower in there like gypsophilia or September flower. But I'm just going to finish it by using the greenery. This is Pittosporum and this was the stem that came with the bench and I had one with the bench and of course I'm using one left over from the design I did a few days ago and I'm going to go evenly around the outside and bring that colour up through the top. Now if you have a section like this that's really quite big and quite heavy just consider trimming it off so that you end up with two pieces. It's not quite so heavy then in the design, it's not going to overfill it and overstuff. You still need to be able to see all those individual flowers and the individual colours. And often when I'm doing arranging, I start with the foliage first and I create an outline with the foliage. But today I was a bit limited with my choice of material because I'm only using that supermarket bench. So I wanted to see how far I could get just using the flowers and then just using a small amount of foliage to fill in as I go. Now this I would refer to as an all-round arrangement. It's a posy style. It's symmetrical because it's the same on both sides. It's possibly not identical in its shape, but it's almost identical. It's the best I can do with the materials that I've got. And the lovely foliage just softens the design and really finishes it off. So we just got a small bit of foliage left. Now don't forget, if you're enjoying the tutorials and hopefully we're back for good this time, then you can join me on Facebook. I have a private Facebook group called Sharon's Innovations Group. Don't find me personally on Facebook. You need to find Sharon's Innovations Group. It's a secret group and on there you can share photos and ideas or you can ask me some questions. And if you're interested in participating in any of the online courses, then you need to message me at SharonDower at Hotmail.com. And I'll list all that there in the bottom. But I think we're done. A great round design that evolved overnight because those lilies have given us a real pop of colour. But I hope that that's something that you'll be able to do at home. It's quite an easy design. It's an all-round just follow a pattern and a structure and hopefully it will come together for you. If you want to ask any questions, pop it in the comment box below and I'll do my best to answer. I've really enjoyed showing you how to make an all-round design today. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a new tutorial. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again very soon. Bye for now.